Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today I'm gonna to fire up the mill so we continue on our making material for our chicken church project. And today we're actually gonna make some shiplap or interior siding. So come along, let me show you what I've got. So last week we detailed how we dropped three trees, three poplar trees, cut them to length and skidded them in here. So we've got plenty of inventory to choose from. And it's great because we've had a lot of rain in the last two days. So everything's muddy and it's just best to stay on gravel here for the next couple days. So since we have a lot of poplar, we're gonna take some of this smaller stuff and we're going to mill two quarter, you know, a little bit more than one half thick boards that shooting for six to seven inches wide, we'll see how the smallest one comes out. And we'll use that as horizontal siding inside the chicken church. So you may be thinking now, siding inside the chicken church or interior walls, isn't that kind of overkill for a chicken coop? And yeah, if it was just for cosmetic purposes, then I would say, yeah, it's a bit overkill, but so is obviously building the chicken church. But let me show you what we have here in our brooder. And this is why I want to put siding in the chicken church. It actually helps with clean out. So if you notice here with our little guys, you know, this is obviously just a stud frame wall sheeting on the outside. But you can see, actually because they're a little intimidated by me, where they're hanging out. They're hanging out in the recesses of those vertical studs. Hanging out there is one thing, but it's all the poop and all the other material that collects there that makes it a pain in the neck when we go to clean it out. So the idea would be with having siding on the inside or shiplap on the inside, then when the chickens are on the roost and they're pooping, and sometimes they don't poop straight down, they poop at an angle, then that's going to hit the siding and come down and we go to clean out the coop on a regular basis. We're not having to go in there and clean out every little nook and cranny with a shovel. That really adds a lot of time to clean out. So trying to be um, more efficient, take the time in the build to make the clean out more efficient. Since that coop's going to be fixed, it's gonna be used all year round, then we wanna make sure that clean out, we can come in, clean it out real quick and get out. So that's the method to the madness. We will not be putting any insulation in between those, the exterior boards and the interior boards. Obviously uh, during the winter time, it'd be nice to have a little bit of insulation, but in the summertime, that would just be way too hot. That would be too much for them. So I wanna start with some of these smaller poplar, get a cant squared and see where that gives us on width. I'm thinking I can get away with six inches and that'd be fine. So um, I'm gonna get the mill fired up. It's been, Wow, it's probably been two and a half, maybe three weeks since I fired up the mill. And right now it's in the high 30s. So let's see how this Kohler turns over here. Well, horse poo. <laughs> We've got a flat tire on the tractor. So let's see about remedying that first.
All right, so with that one cant, that one small log, I ended up squaring a six by seven. So six was my width. And I was able to get 12 half inch thick, six inch wide boards whoo, out of that one can. And of course the bottom, uh, since my mill won't cut below one inch safely, uh, the left a, a one by six there. So we're making good progress. So one log got me uh, 12, I think I need eight. I need eight for, uh, per two long sides. So I'm probably halfway there actually to do all the siding inside the chicken church with just one log doing this at half inch. So we'll get this stacked up and we'll grab another log. Man, I tell you, there ain't nothing like a sharp blade and some small poplar. That was pretty much effortless. It's like cutting butter. But I was able to get 12 more boards out of that, plus a one by six that we'll just put on our pile and use for something. But this should actually get me what I need to do. This That makes a total of 24 boards, and we need eight per side of the two main sides. And so that's 16, and then the other eight can be divided up because of the door and some of the other, other features will break that up. So we actually have all we need to do. We're not gonna do the, the rafter, the peaks. We're just gonna do those sidewalls up to a certain point again to keep chicken poop from going down in behind it. So now I wanna get these stacked up and get some weight on them. We are gonna install these green, but I still wanna get them, get some weight on them just so they don't have a chance to curl up in between the time of doing this and of course getting up there to actually get them installed. So we are getting dangerous close to wrapping up the chicken church project. And once we get that one complete, obviously we'll get our chickens moved and we'll detail that. But we're gonna be moving on to our sawmill shelter next. I've already got it laid out, designed in SketchUp and I'm anxious to share that with you all. And wanna get the concrete work done before the throes of winter set in. But um, I'm not gonna spoil it yet. There's some additional details uh, in how we're gonna build that and start building the retreat cabin and shower house. So I ordered these tools from a blacksmith in Eastern Europe 
highly recommend it. I'm really anxious to get them in, but I ordered them the last week of August and I got shipping notification a couple weeks ago that they were going to, that they had shipped. And uh, it looks like the expected delivery date is going to be the first week of December. So I have to wait a little longer before I can share this with you, but I'm really anxious to show you guys these tools and then be able to share with you the projects and the style of building that we're going to take on here. Definitely a new challenge for me, something I've never done before. So we'll get into that a little on later down the road. Well, I appreciate everybody watching and we invite you to subscribe if you haven't. And uh, those of you that ask are asking for more property exploration videos, um, we obviously, I'd like to do one every week if I could, but I think we may have a couple more coming up. So look forward to those. And, uh, and I'm gonna put together a playlist of all the ones that we've done. That way you can go back and just explore West Virginia properties with me. All right, take care everybody. Thank you.